That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And I have nothing to do with this. You got to interview some cool people. I did. Uh, I, every, every year for the past several years, I've gotten to interview a handful of filmmakers, actors, and producers whose films have been selected in their respective countries for uh, the Oscars for what's now called Best International Feature. Um, so this is <clears throat> an introduction to uh, an interview I did with Danilo Cerveja and uh, Lana Beric, uh, the director and actor-screenwriter of Teresa 37, which is Croatia's uh, submission for the Oscars this year. Um, it's premiered, I believe, at the Warsaw Film Festival and has kept getting delayed due to COVID. So it hasn't been seen uh, in a lot of places, but it was a film that I did really enjoy. Um, Lana, uh, Lara, Lana Baric, who wrote it, uh, it's very much a story uh, about women. Uh, I think there's been kind of talk, there's a handful of other films from this area that are suggesting maybe a, a Croatian new wave, if you will, of uh, female-led protagonist films. Obviously this was directed by uh, Danilo Cerveja, who has directed three other films previously and is, you know, his dad is very famous, uh, Rade Cerveja, who's an actor-director. You've seen him in a ton of stuff. He's done a lot of Hollywood films. Um, Anyway, we just had, I thought, what was a really good conversation uh, in a film I really liked. She really does transform herself in this uh, based on uh, what I've seen of her and in this film, which is very a, a performance that's very reminiscent of uh, early Emma Thompson or uh, Tilda Swinton, if you will. The, the narrative, it's about a, a woman who is desperately trying to conceive because she thinks her happiness is in there. Uh, in having a child and she's just had her fourth miscarriage as the film opens and uh, off-the-cuff comment from a inappropriate gynecologist has her going around sleeping with all kinds of men uh, to hopefully try to get pregnant. It feels very much like uh, Breaking the Waves to me or Sebastian Lelio's Gloria or his remake Gloria Bell, uh, even John Steinbeck's Burning Bright. Uh, yes, I, I just it was a very enjoyable film and a, a good conversation I thought. Anything else? No. Do enjoy. Um, well, hello. My name is Nicholas Bell. I'm the chief film critic at Ion Cinema, and it is my pleasure to be able to speak with director Danilo Cerbeja and screenwriter and star Lana Baric of the film Teresa 37, which is Croatia's official submission for Best International Feature at the 94th Academy Awards. Uh, so congratulations for that distinction. Um, Danilo, I know this is your third time. Uh, it's your third film and it's your third time being selected uh, as an official submission, uh, the second time from Croatia. Um, and uh, Lana, this is your, uh, you're trained in uh, film, television, theater. This is your first, you've written some shorts, I know. This is your first narrative feature. Um, you played uh, at Warsaw at the 2020 Film Festival there. So it's traveled a little bit, but uh, let's start with, the origins. Uh, I read that it took eight years for this project to get off the ground. So it's a question for both of you uh, to talk about how Teresa came together. Mm. Uh, start. Sure. 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 Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I started writing actually when uh, because I was studying acting in Sarajevo, and uh, I was living there. And at some point, I sort of. Uh, like um, uh, got, uh, exited some projects that I didn't want to be part of, which I wouldn't do today, but then, then I was really young. <laughs> and then I had a lot of free time and this was the story that always sort of stuck with me because it's actually combined of several stories that I know of and that I've witnessed and um, that I've heard of as well. And um, I, I, I really wanted to tell a story about a Dalmatian woman in this kind of situation, which is triggered by something that really happened. And, uh, and at that point, I really had a lot of free time and I started, but I didn't know anything about writing the script. So it took a lot of time until I really learned and until I found a producer. And then, of course, I didn't know uh, who, if anyone is going to be interested in directing it. And then a friend of mine, uh, who is playing my sister in the film, she suggested that uh, Danilo should direct it because he wanted to uh, direct a, a female story and wanted to do something different 
um, than the previous films that he did. And so we approached him, talked to him about it. And then again, it took some time until it, we managed to, to, to shoot it. But here we are today. Nice. I, I think it's a, an extremely uh, resonant film that is, it feels universal uh, in the sense, but also feels very uh, personal and specific to split if I'm saying that right, this, the second yeah. city in Croatia, um, which also comes out, I think, as a character. Uh, and I guess if you want to speak to how you decided to feature Split, which kind of, this might sound dramatic, but is kind of feels like a womb that's giving birth to Teresa as a person, like she's coming to find herself. And the progression as we move through the city also changes till we, of course, finally get to the sea. Mm -hmm. Danilo? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, City of Split. Uh, actually, Lana is from Split. So when she was writing it, she, write it, she wrote about a place she knows the best, you know? Because this is, as you said, universal story. Even though Split gives some kind of different smell, you know, Mediterranean, and um, we wanted to avoid beautiful part of Split because if someone don't know, Split is a really beautiful ancient Roman city, and uh, even Game of Thrones was shot there. You know, really beautiful old Roman streets and medieval. Uh, palaces and everything, but we wanted to avoid that. We didn't want to show tourist split. We wanted to show real split where people live, you know. Of course, people live in the old parts too, but uh, uh, we really loved uh, this architecture from the 70s of split. And that time that was revolutionary mm -hmm. architecture. And uh, somehow it fits with uh, our atmosphere in a script. And it gives more emphasis on her inner nervosis, her, you know, feelings. She feels stuck. She feels closed in all these uh, huge buildings, you know, and uh, cold uh, environment. So, and we didn't want to almost know where you, you can see see at the beginning and then why see at the end before. Uh, you have occasionally maybe somewhere you can see the sea a little bit, but uh, we wanted to avoid that, even even though it's a Mediterranean city. So yeah, a very good observation, Nicholas, about the city. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it it has a very a surprisingly moody um, visual aesthetic uh, that that of course does fit uh, Teresa's kind of what's going on inside of her. And your uh, director of photography, uh, Mirko. Pivchevic is also Pivchevic. Pivchevic, Pivchevic, uh is also from Split. I was reading. Yes. Um, so, in many ways, it's a. I think you described it as a film that's a handful of tears and a bag of laughter, which I would say is apt. There are a lot of, uh, as I said, poignant moments, but there are also a lot of. Um, Teresa goes through a lot of distress. Uh, and it struck me that this is um, a, a story about a woman that her right to choose is more than just, of course, she's trying to conceive, but it, it's it's more than just her right to choose about conception. It's about what she does with her body uh, in a cultural sense and a physical sense. Um, and I guess what I'm trying to get at is there, you can kind of count on your hands how many films from this area deal with a female protagonist. So uh, I want to hear what you both have to say about the development of that in Therese at 37. Well, from this area. And uh, this is something that I also wanted to uh, change and point out and you know it's just it has her name in in the title and we don't have many of those either and yes mainly um, I mean in, in Croatian film sometimes there's yeah the the, mm, the supporting characters well uh, basically the the character of the sister which replaced by, by my really good friend Ivana Roščić 
um, uh, is something that you would generally call like a, a lead, <laughs> female lead in Balkan films, you know, but it's actually a supporting role. So yeah, we wanted to put her, you know, in the focus. So basically she's mostly in almost every shot except the in the la, in the last scene and um, i wanted to have a, fo- a, a, a female character a strong female character in focus which is not necessarily heroic and i wanted to and uh, we've talked a lot about this danilo and i we wanted to have this a really raw appro- approach um, concerning camera work, concerning the light and the treatment of actors, their um, appearance and the treatment of sex scenes and the human female body as well and some other things that which you can see and which is not quite popular recently uh, uh, as you know but I really thought uh, we needed to go in that kind of direction and be that direct because it's uh, in the Balkans we're still I think some maybe 20 years behind the rest of the world and then we really need to point out that you know um even though some people said that, like, you know, they were, oh, this is so, like, yeah, it's too much. Uh, because it is too much, I think it's necessary. And that's why we had this really raw approach to everything. And it was really important uh, for us to to do it like this, even though, as I say, it's not really a popular approach these days in cinematography, especially when, when female characters are concerned. Yes. Uh, yes, I can only add, uh, Lana, said everything. I can only add that for me, as a male, it was really very important to do this film because I think the topic is really, really important. Uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed, you know, that we are in the 21st century and we are still talking about uh, uh, gender uh, equality, you know, and about the same things uh, that uh, same things are not, not allowed, but uh, but uh, people around you will judge you differently by your actions if you're a man or if you're a woman. For right. me, that's not acceptable. And which is the worst thing for me that we belong to this, our, we can call our film community, film industry, very open and very, uh, you know, modern in uh, thinking. But we are not, you know. Uh, just watch the biggest festivals, how many male or female members of the jury, uh, you will see big, big difference, you know? And we are open society. You can imagine what's happening in the other industries. So I think that is what we should talk about and what we should change, you know? That's are also one of the goals. And that was my actually biggest challenge, why I wanted to do also this film and to give some contribution to, to my female colleagues in their fight. Right, right. Um, Well, I think what's also interesting is Split, as I understand it, is kind of prized for being a matriarchy, but as you stated, it's a miserable matriarchy because all of the women in the film are really the ones that are policing uh, Teresa, which is fascinating. Uh, Can we talk about the orange? Uh, I really liked that. Uh, I I like it. (laughs) Because that is a device yeah. used, you know, it hits her foot and it starts mm-hmm. to generate some motifs. That's the moment in films where I've seen a lot of women coming to their sexuality. It's like the woman has to be hit on the head and then she's rediscovering herself, like literally. Like this, the, the mm-hmm. motif of the fruit. I'm glad it wasn't an apple. Um, if you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm from Split and it's true. I mean, you know, when I say lots of responsibility is on women too. And I think we need to change a lot of patterns that are happening, especially in Dalmatia and Mediterranean. And because there are many unhappy women down there and it's a beautiful climate, beautiful city and beautiful area. It's just, you know, unlucky. It shouldn't be like that. And I come from Split and um, I uh, rarely come back to it because it's hard. I mean, it's really hard on women, I think. And many things really need to change. And many people tell me like, oh, but you know, everybody loves Dalmatia, it's so beautiful. And uh, I said like, yeah, but you didn't grow up there. It's really hard on women. And um, so for me, it is hard to go back to it. I have to admit, and I don't go, well, I don't call it home 
that much because I have my home now. But uh, yeah, people tell me like, oh, do you go home often? And I say like, well, you know, not, not, a, not that often. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's concerning split and the, the orange. Well, first, you know, it's a, it's a Mediterranean fruit and I really wanted to avoid the apple because it would have, uh, you know, religious connotation, which I didn't want it to have. And since the orange doesn't have any connotation, I was free and everybody is free to put in whatever meaning that you want. You know, it's, it's sort of free of any meaning. It's just an orange. And uh, I love the color. I have to say some of the things when we were doing the film and we were um, in uh, Warsaw for the Ekran workshop and many workshops that we did, people asked me many questions and I was like, why do you, do, what, why do you think this is important? Why did you do this, blah, blah. And sometimes I would just say because. And, uh, you know, people would say like, you cannot say because. And, I, and then I would say, yeah, but I can. It's just, you know, it's just how it is. Yeah. And it's sort of like that with the orange because it's she befriended the orange. You know, it's her friend. And she now connects it to some kind of uh, her own um, uh, life. And uh, it's her own possession. And she, like, she tre treasures it as some sort of, let's say, um, well, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a parallel to a child, but it's something of her own that she um, decided to to cherish and to keep. And then, you know, I triggered the thing with the, the husband that he says, he, yeah, he threw away because it was rotten and blah, blah. It goes like that. So I literally wanted to develop a story around an orange, which, you know, doesn't have any context. And it's just that she gave mm, the meaning to the orange. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think it works on a, a lot of levels because I was left thinking about the orange. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a great shot early on where she's acquired it. She's at home with Marco and she's placed it on this railing. And there's a shot of both of them. And you can see that the orange is, uh, is prominent between them, like the power shift that's also happening, that's generated by this. Yeah. How he throws the orange away, like she's also a, a fruit that's ripe and ready. And he's kind of... Mm -hmm. you know, letting her go to waste. Uh, I really love that. Um, and two, two scenes where I thought you were really fantastic in um, early on uh, where M Mirella is telling you she's moving to Berlin. Uh, mm -hmm. And I love, I love her play the way Maria plays that scene. I love that. But both of you, but even your responses to hers where, you know, you're kind of, it looks like you're dying inside. Uh, yeah. That was a, a tearful scene. And then, of course, the um, karaoke scene in Nicola's apartment. Uh, I also mm -hmm. liked with the Italian song, I'm going to say it right, Na, 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 Na Holeta, um, which I was listening to after the credits ended because I didn't want that feeling to end. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Well, we paid a lot for the Italian songs, so I hope it works. <laughs> it's really hard to get them, and it's uh, you know they're really felicita is really expensive, and Nonoleta as well. So yeah, I love those songs. We talked a lot about them, and actually, did another song to be um, in the ending credits, but then. Uh, uh, the editor of ours, Dubravka, said like, yeah, but we have them, we have that song already in the child pose in the Romanian film. And then we were like, oh, no, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And then Danilo said like, yeah, but we should put Nonoleta. I know it's like very well known, but what do you think? And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So, yeah, I think it's even better. I think Danilo's uh, suggestion of a song in that way it was much better than mine. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, I chose it. I mean, the lyrics are completely opposite than our story. And mm -hmm. first, I like that. But second, somehow I felt the energy of the more, the energy of the song, you know, fits together with that last scene so much. Mm -hmm. uh, with her feelings, mixed feelings, with her expressions, you know. So, yeah, we were, first, we were very sad when we realized that there is already a Romanian song with the other song. And then uh, when I said, let's try with Nonoleta, you know, and first was Nonoleta, why? You know? Then we put it and it really fits fantastically. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, even, even if her in the sea and kind of that shot of 
missing at the table. She's left her seat at the table. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was that all works kind of perfectly. Um, can we talk about Nikola for a moment, who uh, is Serbian? And I, I think that's also, he also brings in, in just the fact of that, a Serbian in Croatia and kind of uh, the history of that area and how that kind of opens a new dimension in subtle ways and um, how that developed, how Nicola developed, who's also a, a notable uh, actor, Dragan uh, Machanovich. Dragan yeah. Machanovich, yes. Who I've seen in things. Oh, and, and Leon Luchev too, as Marco, like both very familiar yeah. faces. Um, it, yeah, if you want to talk about uh, Nicola or Marco, actually. Uh, I can talk about uh, uh, Nicola. And Lana can talk about Mark, okay. <laughs> or both. Uh, well, uh, Dragan, uh, yeah, we were looking, uh, we were looking for an actor in Serbia, and uh, Serbia have fantastic actors, really beautiful actors, but a lot of them have this same spirit, a little bit macho, a little bit cowboy spirit, you know. And we were looking for some something sad, some act who have something inside, you know? And uh, Dragan actually was my first choice. And uh, Lana said, yeah, you know, he really, he has something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a wonderful actor and we are very happy that we had him in our film, you know, because it's really important role. And I, I think he did excellent job. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Well, I wanted to introduce the story of a Serbian guy because I couldn't introduce the story of a French guy or, you know, an English. I, I it needed to be somebody who is not from there and who is a foreigner. And uh, I, uh, she doesn't speak English. It's, she's, you know, she's not that open and she would hardly connect to somebody who is a foreigner that way. So I needed somebody who would speak the language. And then I just used the story of my aunt who really did fall in love with the Serbian guy and we talked a lot about it um, and then she moved to Serbia and uh, got married and she's still living there and we talked a lot about their connection and actually that story is taken from my from my aunt's experience because um, also it has a political connotation which is really strong and which is connected to my family as well as my family is half Serbian and um we we knew what that means in split especially you know still it's not very very popular and uh, so that 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 also that part as many parts in the film are based on uh, on a real life story and that's when I talked to my aunt about it and I said like how, how did you connect to him and she said like well you know Lana he 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 gave me a book as a present and I've never. I've never gotten a book from a Dalmatian guy. <laughs> so it was, yeah, this is what she said. And it really stuck to me. And that's why she says in the film, like, you have many books. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah. 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 This, so it's all, it's all really, it's all, it's all taken from, I mean, real life. And then I combined it just in a, in a, in a nice story, in a, in a real life, the gynecologist, of course, is a guy, but uh, uh, but then I thought it would be uh, just to, to to do the connection. It would be better if it if it were a, a woman. And Marco, Marco is also based on some real characters, <laughs> and uh, he was perfectly played by Leon Lucha. I mean, I think this is one of his not not just because I wrote that, not at all because I wrote that. I'm really happy for Leon because. I I think is really great in it and he really did an, ama an amazing job he's really so believable and it was really important not to make them bad guys you know yeah, uh, yeah. not to make him a bad guy you know he's just like that you know in his own capacity so this was the, the major challenge for me not to make him a bad guy he's not he's not a bad guy he's just as he is I agree. And you can see that kind of play into her guilt about what she's doing too. Um, but yeah, it, it all feels very authentic and um, it's very impressive. Um, and, and I guess, you know, we could go on talking about your film for a long time, but um, <clears throat> my, my, you know, English language references, I was thinking this was recalling all kinds of things from like John Steinbeck to Lars von Trier um, or Gloria from uh, Sebastian Lelio. I was wondering if you had any, uh, as you were developing this, if you had any 
inspirations, any any larger inspirations that you want to shout out or reference. But if not, that's okay too. Well, we talked talk only about, about John. Yeah. yeah, we were talking only about Casavetes, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, his rawness is something that we were drawn to, and I really love him. I, I really yeah. do, and I watch his films over and over again, and I love the way he approaches characters, especially female characters, which are, mm, uh, which are uh, you know, alive. And there's something raw, there's something kind of, um, mm, how do you say it? Uh, uh, mm, irregular in it as yeah. well and i also like i don't like when things are really right and proper yeah. i love it when it's like break you know breaking and when it's irregular and like you know on the verge and i think he's a great filmmaker for it and yeah also oh yeah many blurry blurry moments in his in his film films which i like and this is what we talked about a lot actually i think irregular is a good word yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the general, yeah, especially with general, a woman under the influence, uh, and now that yeah. you see that too, that, yeah, that very much seems uh, like the uh, area Teresa's kind of headed down. Like we, yeah. we're, not, we're not quite sure. It. I think that's what's so perfect about the ending too, is there's a lot that still probably needs to happen for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I, I like that. I liked, no, there's a hopeful note of course but you don't know um yeah but with that is any, is there anything either of you want to add uh before we finish no we're just happy to be here and uh thank you for a really nice interview and uh, my only wish is as many people to see our film that's why we are working doing films to be seen yeah thank you very much nicolas for a lovely conversation yeah. and we are really uh, we had a nice process really working this film, even though it took a, lo a long time, but the whole crew and the actors and actresses are amazing. And we are still in the same energy. You know? Everybody still really loves each other and supports each other and really cheers for the film. And we are really happy we are here. And thank you once again. No, thank, thank you. Thank both of you. I'm really happy you're here too. In a different non-pandemic world, we would be speaking in person in Los I Angeles. Know with a live crowd and you could be able to feel that energy because I think this is a film where that, that has a very potent uh, energy that you would, you know, you want to engage with others about. Um, but be that as it may, here we are. I'm glad you're here. And I am very much looking forward to championing this film and um, allowing people to discover it. So um, with that, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.